I recently acquired this MSI Slot 1 motherboard. Sadly, like most motherboards from the 1990s, it has bloated capacitors. So today, we're going to be replacing those. Let's get started. In the 1990s, electronics manufacturers were looking for every way to cut corners in terms of cost on their products. One of these ways was to use cheap electrolytic capacitors that were not name brand ones like Panasonic. They figured that their boards would be obsolete in a few years anyway, so it wouldn't really impact anyone that much. But I want to fix this board because it's actually a really nice slot one board. So today, I'm going to fix it up by replacing all of those nasty bloated electrolytic capacitors with brand new ones. In terms of tools, there's a couple. First of all, this solder sucker. This will get the bulk of the solder off. Next up, we need some solder, for obvious reasons. We're also going to need some side cutters so we can snip the legs of the capacitors. So what I'm going to do is start with this first capacitor. Now, you may be asking yourself, it's not bloated, so why would you replace it? Well, the point is that when you recap one component, there's no point because the other components are most likely going to fail as well. So you're better off just replacing them all at the same time. So that's what I'll be doing here. As for my method, I'll show you here. As you can see, I've located my capacitor legs on the underside of the board. So what I'm going to do is get my soldering iron and then I'm going to heat up one of the legs. And I'm actually going to apply a bit of fresh solder onto there. Now, the point of doing this is adding more solder for the main solder sucker to suck up. Then what I'm going to do is just heat up the leads of the capacitors and pull out the capacitor from the other side of the board. The solder sucker doesn't work perfect, so that's why we need to do this to get the capacitor out. Now, I've got the new capacitor and I'm going to put it in the holes where the old one was. Then what I'm going to do is bend the legs so it stays in place and now it's time to solder the capacitor in. You want to make sure that you actually heat up the leg before you put the solder on. Otherwise you'll have a cold solder joint, which is no good. Now, to cut the capacitor legs off, I'm just going to come in with some side cutters and snip those legs off. And there you go. We've successfully replaced a capacitor. Only 27 more to go. As for the boring parts, I've just sped it up here. There's no point in me showing you about two hours worth of raw footage of just me soldering some capacitors in place. But there's a few interesting ones that I'll show later. But for now, just enjoy this short little time lapse of me soldering some capacitors. Cue the music. Now that the recapping is done, I think it's time to test it out. Moment of truth. Let's find out. Just jumping the power supply. And it works. Look at that. Wow. 
I'm pretty shocked that it actually works. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm pretty good at soldering. But these capacitors prove to be a big challenge. But it works. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Poking around the BIOS a bit, I can see that this board actually has great overclocking support. So it's actually a really high-end slot one motherboard. So yeah, this board is going to make a really nice build, which you'll be seeing pretty soon to be honest. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Well, that's about it for this video. We've resurrected a slot one motherboard with bad capacitors. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.